What's going on my dudes, Chensley11 here and welcome back to another episode in the A to Z series. In today's episode we have a Dr. Mundo guide and we are going to be showing you how to play Dr. Mundo Top 4 Beginners. So if that sounds good, slap the like button. Uh, we are going to be going through every single champion in League of Legends, so hit the subscribe button if that sounds uh, interesting and good to you. Dr. Mundo, he's an interesting top laner, he's very old um, and in fact he is getting a rework very soon. So. This video is also going to be a bit of a homage to um, uh, to the Doctor Mundo, as he's most likely going to get changed. But for the time being, let's have it, let's give him a game. Let's give him a go. This video we're going to be going through his abilities, his build, and his runes. Uh, the abilities are the most important thing I want to get through today. They are very simple. He's a mechanically easy champion to play. Uh, but uh, this being a beginner's guide for those people who want to learn Doctor Mundo, this video is good. To show you the basics of his abilities and what they do, what Dr. Mundo is good and weak into, um, some combos I guess with Dr. Mundo. Basically auto E, it's pretty much all his combos with maybe throw a cleaver in there. And that's about it guys. The runes, I would have thrown them up on the screen, but um, quick run through. Grasp, Demolish, Bone Plating, Revitalize, and Magical Footwear, Cosmic Insight. Now these are scaling runes. The first thing I'll tell you about Dr. Mundo, we also take Teleport, which is going to go into what I'm saying. Dr. Mundo is a little bit weak early. Um, ooh, we take a massive cue from Mordekaiser, who's a bit of an AP threat early, which is a little bit weird for Dr. Mundo because you kind of want to rush Sunfire Cape. There's the first minion. So yeah, those runes are very scale heavy. Um, they're good for late game. Dr. Mundo early is a bit weak. As I said, his Q doesn't do much damage early. Um... Or what it does, but it costs you a lot of your own health. And this is kind of the way, this is where you want to be sitting in the lane with Dr. Mundo. Kind of defensive positioning. So you can just not look for early solo kills, but more for just trying to set up for your, like a gank from your jungler. Oh, we're going to miss that. It's nice from Mordekaiser to throw his Q down when I go for the minion. Uh, but unfortunately, we can't really, no, unfortunately, we can't contest that one. So yeah, guys, let's go through Dr. Mundo's abilities. As we get traded on pretty heavily. And as you can see, Dr. Mundo is not good early. He's actually quite weak. But the best thing to do in the early game is just to farm up as best you can. Try not to take as many trades. Try to stay healthy. And the best part about that is his first ability, or his passive, is called Adrenaline Rush. Oh, we're going to miss that one. Essentially, um, Dr. Mundo... Uh, passively regenerates 1.5% of his health every 5 seconds. So you can see we have currently 8.7 regen per second. Oh, we're going to miss the cannon. That's so sad. Oh, unfortunately, we're getting pressured pretty hard here. I'm going to make sure we get that with the E. Oh, God. Nice. Auto Q. And we should be able to get that one with auto. So that's all the um, passive is, guys. It's a very simple passive. Nice, he took a tower shot there. Um, it's a very simple passive. This is this is a tough spot to be in here. Um, if you play a lot of Dr. Mundo, this is all too familiar. This this uh, early game is quite, quite uh, sad. But the good thing about the early game is, like in this situation, we, we, are, we are set up for a good gank from our uh, jungler. Terrible to use my uh, W there. Nice, he takes a minion tower shot too. So we want to be here all game. And it's good against, uh, good for a light, like a no, nice early game jungler because they can come gank. But sometimes you've got like a master here or something. So it's hard for the gank to come off. So we just try and sit here as much as we can. We want to get a nice back when we get... Um... Oh, nice. And that's what I'm saying. You can sit back and farm with your Q. Might have to sacrifice a few minions. Uh, especially when his E's up, because he'll just pull you in and trade on you with his uh, enhanced Q. So that is the passive, guys. Now, the reason why the passive is like the way it is, is because Dr. Mundo, his abilities don't cost mana. He's one of the few champions, well, in the early stages of the League of Legends, was one of the few champions that did not... He's trying to block the cannon with his body, so I can't cleaver it, but I did cleaver it. One of the first champions that didn't have a mana pool, and instead, instead of using mana... Dr. Mundo instead uses health. Oh, we got that one. Oh my god, I've ordered the wrong one. Oh, this is tragic. 
We've still got most of them. So Dr. Mundo does not use mana, right? You obviously would have noticed that by now. He doesn't have a mana bar. Oh god, we suck. He has um, obviously health bar. That's all. Let's get in here and try and help. This is a bit a bit risky because I am actually pretty low. That's nice from the jungler. Thank you very much for relieving some pressure. If you could help me shove, that'd be good. Because we've got another whole wave coming. Hmm. Alright, that's all good. We're going to shove as hard as we can. We're going to probably turn on our W. Which I don't recommend doing early game because you're just going to get absolutely mopped. You're going to kill yourself. And what I was saying is you, your champion... Oh my god, we missed the cannon. We suck. Your champion uses health as your um, resource bar. So early on, people were saying, this this is busted. There's no way a champion without mana can work. Um, but it can work. And it's Dr. Mundo is not actually very strong at the moment. So, Fortunately for us, we don't even have to TP. We can just walk back. We're not going to miss too many minions. And we're going to regen most of this health on the way back. So that's a good thing about Dr. Mundo. So yeah, use health. So his cleaver costs 70 health. His W costs 10 health per second. His E costs... Um, sorry, it doesn't cost... And then... It doesn't cost any health. And then the ultimate, you, use, you consume 25% of your current health. Which I'll explain more when we get to the ultimate. So yeah, keep that in mind. Um, so yeah, let's explain the Q. Okay, so the Q is called Infected Cleaver. And there it is there. I threw it out. I missed. So the Q does uh, damage when it hits an enemy. It slows them. And it does um, percent of their current health. Okay, so if we hit a Cleaver on the Mordecai, see how much damage that did? That's just one Q. And look how long the cooldown is. So you can poke people out pretty hard with your Q. In the super early game, I'm talking about level 1, level 2, it's not the best because you end up using a lot of your own health. I'm going to get that one, and we need that one. So yeah, just early, we're trying to just look for getting a CS advantage, which we have. And that's more down to the Mordecai's are focusing a lot on harassing me and not farming. Because I haven't been farming well at all. Oh god, as you can see. So the good thing about Dr. Mundo, once you get your Barmy Cinder, is you, you can shove really hard. Just let my team know. And I've got a little bit of rain priority here, so I can go just have a look. We might be able to look for something here. I'm going to pop my ultimate. I'm just going to flash. Ah, he got me. I was going to say, I should have flashed... I should have tried to kite more, and then you can throw your Qs behind you to slow. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned that. The Q slows, so it's good for chasing down targets when you're ahead. Uh, so you can constantly throw your Q off cooldown, uh, get on top of the target, and then get the auto E reset with your W. Because you've got a lot of burn damage on top of you. Alright, so let's go for health. We're trying to, as best as we can, not buy as many of the armor components um, first as we can, obviously, into a magic damage dealer. I just like the Sunfire Cape because of the uh, passives that it offers you. Then we can get Spirit Visage second item. And we'll probably go Merc Treads this game because they do have a lot of um, CC. Swain, Vi. Ooh, let me dodge that one. Okay, so in this situation in the game, now is when you want to be looking for as many Qs as you can. All right, try not to trade into a shield. We'll, shove, we'll trim this wave a little bit. Again, we're trying to trade as best we can. As soon as he steps up for a minion, we try and throw a Q. Auto. So here we go. We can chase with our Q. Ready? Auto. Throw the Q to slow him down. E. We could have waited there. Auto. Throw the Q. He's dead. So when you have the long lane, like top lane, right? If you can get him to push up into you, you can get a nice... Uh, we're going to get screwed here. We're going to die to the jungle. That's okay. Uh, what can you do? As long as we traded one for one on the Mordekaiser, it's okay. We still have a nice CS advantage. Uh, but that's alright. So next max is your E. Hopefully the Kindra... Ah, she's down a level. I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. Use your ulti. Yikes. And the Mordekaiser got in. They're going to be able to take some plates. Um, at least for me, the Vi seems to be camping top a bit. So this armor is going to be good against her. So yeah, guys. That's the Q. It does percent, percent current health. Um, uh, one other thing I forgot to mention with the Q is if you hit an enemy, you get 40% of the um, health back that you spent on using it. Now that's doubled to 80% if you kill the target. So if you kill someone with your Q or a minion, usually it's minions where this happens, you get most of your health back. 
It's going to ping the team. I'd rather just focus on this wave. Let's get it shoved under. Okay, so the next ability we're going to explain is the ability I'm using now, which is his W. Oh, and before I get any further into this game, because it looks like uh, this could be a, a brutal one, even though we're pretty... Let's make sure we get that ward in there. Um, the gameplay of these uh, guides aren't super important. It's more about me trying to explain uh, the champion and what they're good and bad at. So I feel like that's all we need to do and we'll be good. Alright, so there's a ward there. We can zone him off the whole wave just by throwing Qs. I just don't know where his jungler is, unfortunately. Oh, we missed that Q. Uh, we are also missing some minions too, which sucks. But yeah, if you're in a tough matchup, I think I mentioned it earlier, you can farm a lot with your Q like this. And you get, remember, 80% of the health you used back if you uh, kill the minion. Or 40 if you just hit the target. So like that, we got 40% of our health back. So... Let's let him shove out and we'll try and recreate that situation we had before where it was a long lane and we can chase him down with our Q. It's kind of hard not to push when you have um, when you build Sunfire, obviously, because the the Barmy Cinder. Just look for those Qs. They do a shitload of damage about this part of the game. So the W, right? I was half explaining it. It turns on this AoE uh, fireball around you. And it's a toggle. So if I push W again, it turns it off. I don't have TP, so I can't help. Uh, so now's a good time to use your W because you want to push, right? The W is your last max. It also provides 30% tenacity. We're doomed this game because the enemy team has a Samira, by the way. Uh, so we're going to try and get a plate here. Or plate or two. This is the right, one of the reasons why you take Demolish. Once you get the Cinder hole, uh, the Barmy Cinder, you can push waves in and get... Basically, look at that. A whole kill's worth of gold there without actually doing much. Beautiful. We're going to... Alright, we're gonna back off here. Get that last oh not quite. I was gonna say get that last minion with our Q. Uh no reason to back yet. I mean we do have our item in base, but we could just stay and wait for our teleport to come back up. So now we can just look for some nice Qs on him. Have a look at his items. He just has a haunting guys and a a um what's it called? Blasting one. So that's the W. It gives you tenacity as well. You can kind of pump the W. What I mean by pump is quickly turn it on and off uh, when the CC is about to happen. But late game, your W you can pretty much leave it on the whole game. Like literally just run around. Because you have that much health sustain that it doesn't matter anymore. Alright, we're just going to pop our ultimate. Ah, uh, we're dead. Ah, uh, I should have flashed over here. He still so many stats when he uses his ultimate. That's my bad. I just played that poorly. Alright, so now I think we're going to go Merc Treads. Uh, I think that's going to be a good item in this game. CC plus the magic resist. We're going to be able to get out of the Swain the, um, and the Thresh. Although, this Samira is going to be a bit of a night nightmare. Unfortunately, I wanted to wait until I had TP so I could maybe TP back. That's okay. Alright. So that's the W, guys. Gives you tenacity and you get AoE magic damage around you. Now, the E. The E is called... I forgot to mention the... Um, W's name. It's called Burning Agony. The E is called uh, Masochism. Basically, it's an auto attack reset. So your headbutt. So you can auto E. Uh, the next auto attack, which is your headbutt, does extra damage. Um, also, after you use it... Can you hear this noise? I'll be quiet. That means you have increased AD for the next few seconds. Okay, so that happens after you use your E. Um, additionally... It's like a passive ability on the E. Whenever you take uh, magic damage, which is good into the into the Mordekaiser, you gain a passive magic resist. It also works when you use an ability. So look at my magic resist, 66, right? See how it went up to 67? Okay, look at it, 75. I'm going to have to flash here. Just get out. I'm trying to show the, the um, passive on the, on the E. You gain magic resist... Oh, we're doomed. I should have kited this way. God, we're getting camped this game. But that's okay. Uh, I've had some good games on Dr. Mundo today. This one's looking like an interesting one. Hopefully, with all this pressure we're drawing top, we can get some dragons. But uh, I hope our jungler has smite. Well, he missed the smite, but the auto got it, thankfully. Alright. We are inting this game a little bit, but that's okay. We're going to scale up. That's a nice thing I like to say on my channel. We scale. Don't worry, guys. We scale. But that's the E, guys. So you get magic resist um, 
passively, which is another reason why you can still rush, in my opinion, Sunfire Cape, as long as you stay around the uh, non-armor items. In this case, the Mordekaiser still does a lot of auto attacks, so he does a little bit of... Um, he still does some um, attack damage. Oh, yeah, we got that cannon. All right, let's try and push this in. All right, we do have teleport to support a a dive or something, or if my team gets uh, jumped on. The Mordekaiser is mid. So we've got some time here to push as hard as we can. Try and take back that tower that we've lost. Okay, so now let's explain the ultimate. I missed the cannon again. I'm so good. So the ultimate is called Sadism. God knows how to say that. And basically, you just turn it on. You consume 25% of your current health. And you get massive health regeneration. Okay, so this late game is how... Sometimes, if you ever played a Dr. Mundo, you're thinking, how the hell do you kill this piece of shit, crazy dude, steroid man, uh, with, with a meat cleaver? He just does not die. It's because he's probably just popped his ultimate. And he's just regening all of his health. So let's push this as hard as we can. It's a pretty tough TP here. I'm just going to trade. Um, I mean, like, there's nothing I can do there. I could TP, but it's a 4v1, right? So I'm just going to die. So I'm going to try and trade as much as I can on the map. Try and get some stuff top. So we don't just instantly lose. Oh, and I see now. I'll just TP to this tower. I should be able to clean up here. Oh god. I've used my ultimate, so look at my health. Look at that health regen. Okay, let's try and chase with... Nice Q. We need some damage to follow up, because I'm a tank first and foremost. Look at the healing on the Swain, holy shit. So, Dr. Mundo needs a team around him to do the damage, right? Uh, I, got, I got this way. Ooh, I shut down the Vi. Super good for me. I'd rather the damage on my teammates than me. Because I can just I just get tank items. Uh, but that's okay. Oh, tough one, tough one. So, I use the ultimate there. The, the other thing with the ultimate is you gain a shitload of movement speed. So, if you're chasing a target down, you pop your ultimate. Look at this champion. 200 years. Um, you pop your ultimate, you're throwing cleavers, you can catch up to a lot of targets, which kind of plugs the hole of Dr. Mundo's weaknesses. He is a run-at-you sort of champion. So in today's game, where there's a lot of dashes, we've got an ADC now with 300 dashes. Uh, excuse me, a bit of dinner coming up there. A bit of chicken. Uh, the problem is that you got to... That's the problem, right? So you need an ability to get on top of them. So in this, in this situation, it's your ultimate uh, with your movement speed plus your Q. Okay, so we got a nice big wave to grab here. I love this. So good. Pad my CS stats. Can't miss these ones. There's no of my minions here to steal them. Thank you very much. And I'm going to take my jungle's camp just here as well. So Dr. Mundo loves getting, like, obviously uh, ahead in items and levels. Nice cleaver there. Um, because now I've got my core items. Here is when Dr. Mundo starts to feel really strong. Providing the enemy team isn't super fed. Uh, my team needs to stop fighting. There's no there's no objectives. There's not, no reason to fight. Can we get the... We can get it. Alright. Alright, I might have to start grouping with the team to stop stem the bleeding here. Because I'm probably the most fed on my team. I'm not sure. I haven't, I'm going to have a proper look. I have the most resources. Because I've been allowed to split push and gain uh, a lot of XP. And farm for free, even though I got pretty hard uh, camped. Uh, no, the misfortune is pretty well. She's just struggling to farm a little bit. So the next item you're going to go is war mogs, all right, for even more healing. So if you ever have a Doctor Moon on your team, what's the first thing you should buy? You should buy an Executioner's Calling if you play ADC, or you uh, an attack damage dealer, or you should buy Morellos. Nice. Oh, see that beautiful Q there? Don't worry about Dr. Mundo. He does a shitload of damage. Auto E. Let's throw the Q down. Nice. I'm happy the Ari got the Q, actually. I don't need the gold. I want this dragon. Beautiful. 
came through. I'm going to push the tower because I have um, Demolish. So I should be able to get a lot of this tower down. And then I'm going to go join the dragon. So beautiful. I came in there. I was able to get some nice cleaver. That beautiful cleaver, I was able to just thread the needle there. Making up for my early game mistakes. Coming back in this game. Hopefully we can win. Let's steal this away from the enemy jungler. Oh yeah, and Dr. Moon can also play... I, mean, I am creep blocked so hard here. Alright, I'm going to have to flash here, I think. Eh, nice, got a slow on him. I'm going to pop my ultimate and then run around. And then watch all this health I'm going to get back. And then I'm going to rejoin the fight. Here we go. Oh, can I get the can I get the Mordekaiser? Yeah, I'll get the Mordekaiser. I think I'm I think I'm bone though. Look how tanky we are, guys. Oh well, <laughs> I tried to do my best there to at least trade one for one. Okay, so now we got our war mocks. So we're super fed, even though we're getting hammered here. Six and six. We're feeding the enemy, but we're getting fed ourselves. Most farm on the team. So so far, most farm in the game. Close. Samira is equal with me. So that's Dr. Mundo's place though. You can see now after you're having your core items, once you pop your ultimate, you are super, like, disgusting tanky. It's absolutely insane. Oh god, get bursted. Auto. But yeah, unfortunately that's okay. Um, Dr. Mundo is... Might be able to pick off this Swain here. I think we will be able to pick him off. Ah, the CC is real. I just got CC'd. I couldn't get in there. Right, I've got to just head to my tower. The Swain is looking juicy, man. This is a problem with Dr. Mundo. I can't actually just get on top of him. Oh, yeah. We're going to get CC'd here. All right. Let's just uh, set off my W and start healing back up. Oh, God. All right, I've, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tr uh, try and chase with my Q. Uh, I'm gonna turn on my W. Should have had that on the whole time. So look at this, I've got nice chase potential. Auto E, I get the kill on the Swain. I'm gonna head back top. I'm gonna push out top. Um, someone can grab bot farm. <clears throat> so you can see I'm building full tank, right? So Doctor Mundo is a tank, yes, but he's actually kind of a like a, a fighter. He can actually trade a lot of damage with enemies, so it's kind of cool because you're like a full tank, but you just do a shitload of damage. It doesn't matter how much damage I can do, I still can't get cannons. Alright, there's no objectives except for the Baron, so we're going to push as hard as we can topside. Uh, right now I have teleport, so I guess I should be... Oh, we missed it. I should be bottom, because then I can TP into the Baron fight. So then I can draw pressure as far away as the Baron as I can. For example, if I'm here and I draw two people, my team can do the Baron for free and then I could maybe even TP on top. If I'm over here and two people come after me... Oh, then you agreed to a surrender. No, I was having a good time. Anyway, guys, unfortunately my team surrendered. Um, again, again, the gameplay is not important. As long as I get to show you what I feel like Dr. Mundo is good at, which is running down people with a crazy axe, which is basically Dr. Mundo's whole playstyle. It's super fun. Uh, unfortunately, my team gave up. I think we could have won that, actually. Uh, I could have split a bot there for a minute. Um, got some tower pressure. And then TP'd over to the Baron. But it is what it is. What can you do, guys? Please, if you guys play a lot of Dr. Mundo, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Some other strategies you like to do. I've been having a lot of comments uh, recently on my other videos. Uh, some Anivia mains giving some advice, which was good to see. Uh, that's what we We're just here to help people play League of Legends better. That's what the channel's about. So anyway, guys, if you enjoy the video, please hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel. It helps me out a lot. We're going to have plenty more of these. Thank you for watching. And remember, at the end of the day, it's night time. Take it easy.